Hello, fellow diamond painting addicts, and welcome back to Diamond Painting Anonymous. I'm Daphne, and I'm here today for this week's Whip and Chat. If you're new here, welcome. If you're not new here, welcome back. Whip, W-I-P, stands for work in progress, and this is mine. You are welcome and encouraged to go grab whatever you are working on and work alongside while I chat. Or alternatively, you can treat this as a podcast and just listen while I chat. Today, I'm going to be working on one of my want series kits. This is Lady Luck by Romy Lerda from Dreamer Designs. So I'm going to move things around a bit, zoom into where I'm going to be working, and I'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. All right, let me get my timer started here, and then I will jump into my life update. What's been going on in my regular life? Well, not a ton. Kind of same old, same old for this week. I spent a lot of time this week going through things, sorting out household stuff. I cleared out some more craft items. We bought another tote so that I have another tote for diamond painting storage for all the kits that I'm going to take with me. I think two will be enough. I've got a couple of other boxes that I've saved that multiple kits can go in. So I think we got most of my really big kits in the first storage tote, so I'm hoping that everything else will fit in the second one. I still have other craft items that will go in boxes and things, but for the actual diamond paintings themselves, I think that tote will be enough. If not, we'll get another one. We got a lot of things done last week, errands and stuff like that, and some some stuff out of the house, but I know it has to get done and I know some of the stuff can only be done when he's home, but it just feels like it makes our weekends go really fast. And since that's really the only time we get to spend together, I mean, we talk to each other every day. He calls me every morning before he goes to work. He calls me at night when he is back at the hotel, but this is not the same as being in the same room. Anyway, so this weekend, we got some more things listed on Facebook that we're going to get rid of. So hopefully we can make a little bit of money and get some more stuff gone. I got a few more boxes of stuff packed. I actually took down a bunch of art and photos and everything off the walls that I want to take with us and started wrapping that. We bought... Last weekend, we bought bubble wrap and some other stuff so that we could pack some of our more fragile items. So I started doing that, and I took a bunch of other art off the wall that we're either going to donate or put in a garage sale or something like that. And both my son and my husband commented after I took a bunch of it off, it looks so empty down here with all this stuff off the walls. And I said, yeah, that's why... Whenever we move someplace, that's one of the first things I do because it makes it feel, I don't know, it just makes it feel more permanent somehow. Like your brain is like, oh, okay, we're staying here because there's stuff on the walls now. Why that is true, I don't know. I'm sure some psychologist would have an explanation for that, but plus we've got to repaint and everything. So we're going to have, so that was part of the week. <laughs> the week started out interesting. First of all, <laughs> it was a good thing my husband was still home. My son walks out of his bathroom with this dripping wet towel and says, where do I put this? And I said, well, put it in either one of the hampers or the washing machine. Why is it dripping wet? Oh, my sink is leaking. Well, how long has it been doing that? I don't know, a day or so. Well, thanks for telling me because now I get to pay for a leaky sink. Thanks a lot. Luckily, hubby was home and he was able to fix it. Just He just needed to tighten something up, he said. Something worked its way loose. So it's all fixed, thank goodness. And thank goodness he was home because I would have had no idea what to do. But I'm just like, just randomly walk up to me this dripping wet towel. What do I do with this? <laughs> okay. Anyway, we also, at the beginning of the week, we had some pretty significant storms. So I woke up. It was probably like 2 o'clock in the morning, 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning on Tuesday morning. And I knew, I had been watching the weather before I went to bed Monday night, that we were supposed to be having some storms. But where we live, 
a lot of times when they say we're going to get bad weather, it just doesn't happen where we live. We're like in some kind of valley or something. And so the weather just kind of skirts around us. So it hadn't rained or done anything at our house. And I just went to bed and thought, meh. And I w- woke up around 2, 2, 33 o'clock and realized our power was out. So I checked my phone so that I can notify the electric company and realize that I've already got a text on my phone that says they know about it, they're working on it. Okay, well, they know about it, they're working on it, good, I don't need to do anything. But everything was completely dark, so I was awake and I thought, well, I'm not gonna go back to sleep now until the power comes back on, so I'm gonna read or play on my iPad or something. So I hooked, because our internet was out obviously with no power, nothing to power our Wi-Fi. So I can use my phone as a hotspot. I did that. It was like playing my games and stuff on my iPad like I normally do. But then I was like, well, I really want some kind of a light in here. I'm awake. And we have a little Jackery type solar powered little battery thing. And it's been a while since we charged it. It's just been sitting in the living room because we just haven't used it much during the winter. So I thought, oh, I wonder if it has any charge left. And I turned it on and it still had like 70% power. And I thought, okay, well, let me find a little lamp somewhere, like one of our little desk lamps or something. Let me find that and see if I can just get that going long enough that I'm not using my phone flashlight and wearing my flashlight, the phone battery down. So got it all hooked up. It worked. It was powering it. I had like a little desk lamp that I was using and it worked great. So I was very proud of myself. Woohoo, I figured it out, I've got light. So it's been maybe 10 minutes since the power went out or I woke up and all of that. I've got the light on in my room. I'm laying in bed, playing on my iPad, playing my games and everything and my son knocks on my door. Mom powers up. Yes, I'm aware. Did you call them? And I said, well, I didn't need to because I already have a notification from them that says they know it's out, it's storming, because it's we can now hear. We didn't ever really get bad weather. We got maybe 15 minutes, if that, of like really heavy, heavy rain, and then nothing, it just quit. Now it was super windy, which I'm assuming is probably why the power went out, something, a tree limb or something took something out, but I did when it was pouring down rain, I was like, oh man, I feel sorry for whatever poor guy is out in the rain fixing all of this. Cause I'm just thinking to myself, oh, I'd hate for my husband to be the one who's out in this having to fix whatever's going on. Cause dealing with those wires and everything when it's super windy is always dangerous. Everything blowing around. And so I'm telling my son, it's fine. It'll, it'll be back on in a while. It's the middle of the night. Just go back to bed course he was probably up playing or something and his game went off because his computer went off which is probably why he came upstairs but I just said you know we're just there's nothing we can do just have to wait till it comes back on they had said it would be back on several hours later it was actually on within an hour so whatever happened apparently wasn't too big of a deal for them to fix and then we all went back to sleep so it was fine And then when it came back, all the power came back on, I got up and I fixed all the clocks and everything. And then I went back to sleep. (laughs) Although I was kind of sweating a little bit how soon they were going to turn it back on because last week it's been, it was really warm. I think like last Sunday it was 90 something and it was in the eighties all this last week. And I thought, oh, we've been running the air conditioner. I hope it's not going to get super hot in the house, but it came back on within an hour and I thought, okay, so we're cool. And then hubby actually got home early this week because it was super windy on Thursday. So it was, they were doing stuff with wires and everything and it was too windy, too dangerous for them to work. So they ended up not working on Thursday. So he came home early Thursday, Thursday night, it got so cold that we turned the heat back on for the last couple of days. It's been so cold and it's supposed to be so cold this week that we've had a frost warning issued for later this week. And I told my husband, I wouldn't be surprised if we have snow 
if they're if it's going to get as cold as they say it is because I mean it wouldn't be the first time we've had snow in April around here but it just seems so crazy and he's constantly looking at the temperature up where his folks are where we're going to be moving to it's like 20 degrees warmer up where they are in Canada right now than we are here. <laughs> it just seems crazy. It would be be really interesting if we moved up there and then it's warmer up there than it is down here, which shouldn't be true, but who knows? So yeah, the weather's been weird this week and just more of the same, me packing, sorting, boxing, getting ready for the move. I did talk to hubby today and said, you know, we really probably need to get the house on the market sooner rather than later because we don't know how long it's going to take to sell. And hopefully the fact that we need to stay in it until roughly the end of July will not be a big deal. Also, I'm starting to think that we really need to start looking in earnest for a house up there. We're still trying to decide whether we want to just rent for a while. I mean, there are pros and cons to that. The pro for renting obviously would be that that would let us kind of settle in. We'd have more time to kind of look for a good deal on a house instead of just kind of being stuck with whatever happens to be available when we're ready to move, that kind of thing. Also financially, that frees up a lot of liquid assets. If we sell this place, then we'd have all the cash from the sale of this place that we could live on, put towards rent, that kind of thing. I think part of it is just feels like wasting money a bit to rent. Plus if we rent, it would likely be part of a house instead of a whole house. And since my son is going with us, I don't know if I wanna shove all three of us into a three bedroom apartment, or I guess even a two bedroom apartment, depending on what we could find after being in a house for so long. I didn't think about that either. My kids, I mean, obviously my daughter does now. She lives in an apartment, but my kids have never lived in an apartment. We've always lived in houses. Even when we were moving around when they were younger, it was always still a house, not a, an apartment. So I don't know. I was talking to my husband about it. His sister and brother-in-law have rented the same house from wherever it is that they live they've lived in the same house as a rental for 20 plus years I think and theirs is they rent it's a two-story house with a basement so they rent the two upper floors and then there's a second tenant in the basement I don't know like I said lots of pros and cons plus with the insurance and all that maybe renting is the way to go I just don't want us to feel squished but I guess we're getting rid of a bunch of stuff. Maybe they'll be, maybe it'll feel roomier than I realize because we won't have all of our stuff. We won't have an entire household of furniture that we're taking with us and things like that. I do need to finish sorting stuff. I'm going to work on stuff again this week. Hubby and I spent some time this weekend going through our storage closet in the basement, which is a lot of seasonal items and Christmas decorations, holiday decorations, stuff like that. Also our furnace slash utility room where we keep a bunch of that stuff. Went through that to get rid of some of that as well. It feels good to see stuff leaving the house. I mean, it's still a little bit sad because obviously we're getting rid of a bunch of stuff but it does feel like I'm making progress and I think it will go even faster my plan is for right now I'm basically going through everything by myself once my son is done with school which hopefully he will be done in another month or so I was gonna say month and a half but we're over halfway through April so he should be done in another month and then I can make him actively start helping me all the time instead of just here and there since he won't have to worry about homework or anything anymore and then we can we can make progress a little bit more rapidly than I've been doing with just me doing it on my own I mean I feel like I'm making progress so it's not that I don't feel like I'm making progress but and I'm actually I haven't talked to my husband about this yet but I feel like it makes the most sense if like two weeks to a month before we're ready to go, he 
just quits his job and we just concentrate on the move, getting everything done, getting everything ready, packed, buying the trailer that we need, getting everything sorted, garage sale, the house sold, all of that stuff, and then worry about jobs and all of that once we get up there because he's he's already talked to several people he's got a line on jobs once we get up there but it's until we get up there there's not a lot they can do and I mean they can say oh yeah we'll we'll find a spot for you we don't know if that's going to be true or not things change we're still waiting to find out about his retirement and stuff the the people the advisors that he's been talking to are supposed to be sending him a packet of information for him to go through so I don't know just a lot of a lot of balls to juggle and I feel like once we get close to the finish line having him here to do stuff is going to be important just because we're going to have to do things like go to closing and all of that kind of things and buying the trailer and getting everything packed up if that's what we decide to do and stuff like that he's a very good at okay yes let's do that but then he doesn't actually do anything so until we kind of sit down and I say okay we have to do this now it won't get done he's just too much of a go with the flow kind of guy which is good in some ways but in others drives me crazy I did decide the other day that I've been worrying about what I'm going to do with the YouTube channel and kind of how I'm going to approach things once we move because I'm going to be moving to Canada you know do I need to move it from my social security number to my SIN number how does that all work that sort of thing so I know I've mentioned before the United States no matter where you live you still have to file your American taxes so even though we're going to be living in Canada and paying taxes in Canada because obviously we have to file income tax in Canada as well because we're all American citizens, we have to still file our taxes in the United States. We may not owe any taxes in the United States because we will have paid taxes in Canada, but we still have to file. And so what I'm running into is in searching, I haven't found anything specifically about YouTube, but on other things that I've been researching, they're like, well, you're a US citizen, so even though you may be physically located in another country. They basically want me to fill out all the tax paperwork as if I'm an American citizen, which I am, because I still have to file taxes. For people who are in from other countries, you don't have to do that. Like for instance, my husband in Canada, coming here and working and living in the US, he's paying taxes here in the States. And because he's not been living in Canada and using any of Canadian resources, he doesn't have to worry about filing taxes in Canada. I wish it worked that way for us, but alas, it does not. So I guess in some ways it's easier. And I told my husband, I guess I'm just not going to worry about it. I thought it would make a difference, but I also thought it would make a difference like for my son going to school being in, located in Canada, which was one of the reasons we put it off was our move was to let him finish. But he's got that guy in his class that's going to school while he's in Brazil. So what do I know? I worry about things that don't matter, apparently. Not that that's a surprise to me, but you know. Anyway, okay. I think that's everything for my life update, I think. I'm sure if it's not, I'll come back to it. <laughs> so my diamond painting update. What's going on in my diamond painting life? Again, not a ton, but stuff. I did my wish I'd known video. That video has actually been on my want to do list for a while. And just kind of in the back of my mind, thinking about what I wanted to say, what I wanted to include hugely positive response from everybody so thank you to everybody who watched and commented on the video i think the thing that i mentioned that i got the most comments on was fomo the fear of missing out yeah i wish that someone had told me at the very beginning like i said that that was going to be a thing i i think that's how so many of us 
have ended up with big stashes. And it's, I know it's how I personally have ended up with paintings that I think, hmm, was I in love th with this one? Or was it just that I was like, well, if I don't get it now, I will miss my chance. And for a, a lot of kits in my stash, unfortunately, I think that's probably the answer. I think the FOMO resonated with so many people because it leads to so many other things. If you get sucked into that, you get sucked into spending all this extra money, you have this very large stash, you have not enough time possibly to do all of the kits. Honestly, after my first year and figuring out how much money I spent, I was shocked. I mean, I was literally apologizing to my husband because I had no idea that I had gotten that carried away. When you're just looking at it as a weekly expense, instead of totaling up how much you're spending over the course of a month or a year, it doesn't look like very much. But once you total it all up, I mean, for me, I was, yeah, shocked when I realized how much money I'd spent. And not that I had overspent in a way that was dangerous to anything. I mean, we were still paying all of our bills and that kind of thing, but I think it's very easy for people to get sucked into that kind of stuff. Someone compared it to gambling and it kind of is that almost. I mean, it's a great marketing tactic for companies who need your money to survive, but yeah, it's just really difficult to deal with. And that's one of the reasons why every year now I set a budget for myself and I do the thing every month where I go through what I spent because it's a way to help me keep myself accountable for the money that I'm spending. I mean, I have maybe a bit more of an excuse than a lot of people because I am buying things that I use on the channel. So there is that, but I still don't want to spend a bunch of money on things that I'm just going to end up giving away or not ever getting around to, right? So yeah, I just do the budget to help me be more mindful. And I've gotten to the point where I don't look at the new releases every week anymore. Occasionally on a Friday or something, I'll go look up somebody's Instagram or something and see if there's anything coming out that I think, oh, I that's really pretty. I want that one. But honestly, there are very few kits anymore that I think, ooh, I absolutely have to have that one. And even still, I can tell you of at least a couple of occasions recently where I've ended up buying a kit that I probably didn't like that much to save myself on free shipping or because I was using points to get me over whatever, to make it worth spending the points, that kind of thing. So it's always there in the back of my mind that I need to be aware of that. But yeah, that that video got a huge response. So thank you guys for that. I really appreciate that. I'm having one of those weeks where imposter syndrome is a real thing. And also having one of those weeks where I need to constantly remind myself that comparison is the thief of joy. Oh, something else that was mentioned in that video was that we don't all have the same amount of free time for hobbies. Like for me personally, I don't work. So I have way more free time than a lot of other people. Someone who has a full-time job, for example, and or a family probably has way less time to free time to diamond paint than someone like me. So that's something to take into consideration when you're talking about or thinking about your personal stash and what you want to spend and that sort of thing. We're all coming at it from a different place. I also, after so many comments and so many people talking about it, I thought, I wonder how differently I would view my stash if I did it, if I figured it up in terms of number of hours I would need to work in order to finish everything in my stash. I actually kind of sat down and thought about, well, how would I do that? But there's really no good way to figure that out without actually opening every single kit in my stash because it makes a difference on how many colors there are, whether there's a lot of multi-placing, whether there's a lot of confetti. I mean, those two things will change how many hours something might take, even if a kit is the same size as another one. I mean, a, a 
40 by 50 kit with a lot of multi-placing is going to take less time than a 40 by 50 kit with a lot of confetti. So I don't think there's any good way to figure it out, but I did tell my husband, I thought, I wonder how differently people's approaches to buying kits would be if instead of just the price, it also included a, this will take you approximately X number of hours to work. Maybe that would make people think twice before they purchased a kit. I mean, I know I literally have enough kits in my stash that I could work for years and not get through all of them. I mean, I have 80 something in my stash, probably a little bit less than that because I've worked on some kits, but 80 something kits in my stash. For example, Lizette had, uh, at Lizette Crafts and Tell, she had what, 50 kits in her stash? and it took her over two years to complete all of them. Now, again, who knows if that would be true for mine because hers seem like a lot of confetti heavy kits and a lot of very large kits. So maybe it would be similar, but maybe it wouldn't. Who knows? And also we're in different places. I probably have way more free time than other people, like I said, to work on kits. I mean, that doesn't change the amount of time that it takes to work on them necessarily, but also if you're someone who only single places, that probably takes longer than someone like me who's willing to multi-place. So just lots of, lots of things to consider. So it was a really interesting video and I'm glad I finally did that one. And speaking of stashes, I also, yesterday's video was another stay or go video because as I was looking through my stash, Looking through my stash and also looking through specifically my dreamer designs, my older dreamer designs, I opened up my Victorian mansion. It's a very pretty kit, but it is an older dreamer designs and I'm very, I'm very hesitant about whether or not the drills are going to be gappy. Having done, and again, I will say it's not just dreamer designs that I'm worried about. I have older kits from other companies as well that I'm second guessing because I just know, especially if it's not a kit that I'm absolutely in love with, that I'm going to continue to avoid doing it because I'm worried that the gappiness of the drills is gonna drive me crazy. I mean, I'm doing my five oldest kits as one of my goals this year. I've done two of them. Two of them were older Diamond Art Clubs. They were both square. And while they are both cute, I just realized I missed those right there. While they were both cute and they turned out really well, they were gappy and kind of drove me crazy. And I just don't want that to be my diamond painting experience for the next several months. I mean, for instance, like this one right here that I'm working on, this is a Dreamer Designs and it is round. And I am absolutely loving how it's going. So no hesitation working on this one. It's fabulous. I love the way the drills look. It's turning out so pretty already. I've only done one section and I'm already so happy with it. That's the kind of experience that I want. So I'm leaning towards let it go and pretty unanimously that's what you guys thought too. So that may be something I let go of as well. Okay, I did, because you can see that I'm working on this one, I did finish my Foxy Love Kit, my Pam Diamond Painting Kit. You'll be seeing the video of that one. I'm actually really happy with that one. I may go back and look and see if she's got some other ones that I want to pick up before we move, but that one turned out really well. My husband actually asked me if it was one that my daughter was going to end up wanting because he thinks that she'll really like it. I don't know if she will or not, we'll see, but that one is done so you guys will be seeing the completion review for that one here shortly and that means that I can start on this one which this one is from my want series it's not very big it's only a 40 by 50 so hopefully it won't take very long and like I said I'm loving it so far the drills are awesome it's just been kind of smooth sailing I love the ABs that have come with it the drills are so nice I wonder if dreamer designs uses the same supplier as Craftably because they kind of remind me of Craftably's rounds. But yeah, having a, a good experience with this one. And like I said, this one is on my want series list. I didn't get to anything from my want series last month. 
So I'm kind of behind on that, which is why I picked this one out because this one is smaller. So I have this one to do. So I'm going to be working on this one. I don't know if I'll get to another want series this month. This week while hubby is gone, I have promised myself, which doesn't mean that much because I promise myself every week, but I need to get going on my Josephine wall. I haven't touched it again this week. I hung it back up in my office so that I would have room to do things on the dining room table and I just have not gotten it back out so it's kind of languished <laughs> in my craft room and I need to get it back out. I really want to get that one done by the end of May. That's never going to happen if I don't actually get it out and start working on it. So I need to get that one out and get going on it, especially while there is an event going on. I believe the event runs this month and next month, but I definitely want to get that one done before DP for Pets. And I think if I just spent some time on it, I would be able to make a significant chunk of progress. I just haven't done it. So I definitely want to get that one done. That would be a huge thing to get off my plate. So I really want to make some significant progress on that. I also have pulled out my temperature kit from Craft Pack Canada. I have January and February done and I have all of the data for March, but I haven't actually laid the drills for March. So I want to get that done. But now we're so close to the end of April, my brain is like, just wait until April and then do two months at once. So maybe that's what I'll end up doing. I don't know. So those two projects definitely, but I will have finished my Pam Diamond painting, the Fox one. Plus if I finish this one, that's at least some hours to put towards my goals for the month. So there is that. I think that's what I was afraid of with the J wall is if I just worked on that, I wasn't going to get anything done and then I wouldn't have any hours. I mean, it'll all even out when I put the hours in when it's finished, but yeah. So that's on my agenda this week is to get that done. I have also been trying to, while I'm packing and sorting and doing all of that, been trying to brainstorm some new ideas for videos. I had a lot of fun doing the things I'd wish I'd known and some of the other videos that I've done. So I'd like to do some more fun things like that. I've got ideas for some projects, but I always seem to come up with these ideas for things that are going to take me several weeks to complete. So it's not like a quick one and done video, like an unboxing or something like that. Plus, I think my mojo took a little bit of a hit. I mentioned before, comparison is the thief of joy. I was feeling really, really good about where I was at as far as the YouTube channel and my creating and everything. Because you guys, I've hit 8,000 subscribers. So a huge, huge thank you to everybody who watches and everyone who has subscribed. I never imagined in my wildest dreams that when I started the channel that I would make it this far. So huge thank you to everybody for that. If you haven't subscribed, hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss out on any future videos because I would love to have you as a subscriber. So doing really well, feeling really good about that. Hubby and I were on our way to get groceries when I realized I'd hit the milestone and so we were kind of celebrating. And then it's like immediately on my YouTube feed, I get all these people popping up who have way more views on their videos and things. And it's like, I'm immediately in that mindset of well, what am I doing wrong? What do I need to do differently? And while there's nothing with nothing wrong with thinking about those things, I mean, I try to learn new things, learn new skills that I can use to make the channel better, invest in new equipment, I'm trying to learn a new editing software so that I can be better at that. I watch videos about how to edit things to try and be better at that. And then, you know, these videos pop up and I'm like, well, what am I doing wrong? So yeah, I just have to remind myself, comparison is the thief of joy. Like I never in a million years, like I said, thought that I would get where I am right now. So I'm grateful for that. 
and I'm just going to keep on keeping on. I can't be anyone other than me, right? Everybody is different. Everybody has different likes and dislikes. I just need to do what I need to do. I've been successful doing my own thing. And rather than comparing myself to other people, I just need to keep doing my own thing. That's really hard to remember some days, but so yeah, a huge thank you to everyone who subscribed. AK is amazing. I will probably be doing something to celebrate that in the next week or so. So again, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on anything cool. And yeah, just a, a huge thank you to you guys for coming along with me on this journey. I'm, I'm not done yet. I don't know exactly where I'm gonna go. I've had a lot of people ask me if I plan to continue doing this once we move. I do plan to. I'm not sure what that's going to look like because there's just a lot of unknowns. I have in my head that I'm going to do a bunch of videos ahead of time so that during the week while we're moving, I'm not having to worry about like trying to film in a hotel room and all of that nonsense but I might have to. I mean, it wouldn't be the first time that I've done all of that. So if that ends up happening, it's not the end of the world. But I'm also looking at, I'm hopefully going to be launching a, a second channel. My plan has always been for us to kind of, once we move, to have a separate YouTube channel where I talk about the process of getting our permanent residency, of moving to Canada, what our life is like, you know, kind of a an American living in Canada kind of thing, things that are different. I've already started a list just from our travels up there, you know, or my or my husband and I talking about things and I'll say, well, what about this? Well, in Canada they do it this way. And some of it is similar and some of it is so different it just blows my mind. So yeah, I'm hoping to launch that soon. Once I do, I will let you guys know. I feel like it would be better to keep it on a separate channel rather than trying to combine it with the diamond painting stuff. I feel like maybe that's a little bit too confusing. So once I have all the details worked out, because you know there's all that boring stuff of figuring out a name, a logo, and then I've got to get it all set up. I've got to make sure nobody else has taken the name that I want. Getting kind of all of that behind the scenes stuff done before I have a channel that I can announce that you guys could go hopefully subscribe to. So yeah, lots of, lots of changes coming and would love to have you along on that journey as well. Again, a huge thank you to everybody who subscribes. My husband and I were talking about that and I, he said, you know, Tim, when you started this, did you ever think that you would make it here? And I said, no, I really didn't. I don't even think 8,000 subscribers was on my radar. I wanted to make it to 1,000 subscribers because that was the monetization ceiling at the time. And it honestly felt like I had to fight tooth and nail for every single one of those first thousand subscribers. It was a constant gain some, lose some, gain some, lose some. And for those of you who, who are out there struggling and thinking that it's never going to happen, just keep at it. I'm firmly convinced that 90% of making it on YouTube, it whatever that looks like for you, I mean, for some people making it maybe a million subscribers, that's never been my goal. That's not ever going to be my goal for this channel. But whatever you're doing, just keep at it. I mean, part of it is, like I said, I'm firmly convinced that part of it is just time is longevity because the longer you keep at it, the more videos that you do, the more videos you add to your, not backlog, what's the word I'm looking for? You add to your library, I guess. And so you've got all this history of videos for people to go back and look and watch and it all counts. So even if somebody is watching a video that I did two years ago, that still counts now if they're watching it, right? So yeah, just keep at it. I mean, some of the people that I know I compare myself to have been at this for years longer than I have. 
a lot of the people I know that I compare myself to are completely different. I mean, my channel focuses pretty much just on diamond painting. I don't do color by numbers. I don't do paint by numbers. I don't do other crafts. I don't do crochet, cross stitch, whatever else people are doing to include. I mean, I know there are people who do like resin work. And so, yeah, I'm doing things a little bit differently and that's okay. Yeah, I think that's my my advice to, if I had to advise my younger self, that's what I would be like. Just, just hang in there, keep at it. Yeah, I never would have imagined getting to where I'm at now. So yeah, just a huge thank you to everyone. Okay, on that note, I think that's everything that I needed to share with you guys this week. Not a huge, long whip and chat, but that's okay, right? Sometimes life is busy and we just don't have as much time to craft as we would want. So zooming out here to kind of show you what I've already got done, I've done this little section over here. I, I'm i loving all of the shading and how it really looks, and now I'm getting into the AB. So I'm really loving how that looks too. Although I gotta say, there's some mixed in here that like some of these seem very gold, and then some seem very pink, and some seem kind of white. So. I may be going back in kind of sorting through some of these and or looking to see if I have any other ABs of this color, which it's 666. This is my favorite color. I'm sure I probably do and substitute some of these in. This whole section here is going to be another AB. It's going to be this other kind of slightly lighter red AB, but I'm loving how everything is turning out so far. And like I said, I'm absolutely loving the drills. I think it's turning out really well having so much fun. This is only a 40 by 50, so hopefully it won't take very long. I'm actually hoping to have this one completed by the end of April, even though I'm gonna spend time this week working on my J wall. You guys help keep me accountable for that. So leave me a comment below and let me know, do you think this looks weird? Am I worrying about this for nothing? Like, I feel like this one right here looks kind of pink. The rest of them are kind of gold, but then I've got these other ones that look kind of white. Would you sort them all out? Here, I'll show you what they look like in the tray. So you can see some of them, is it just the lighting? Am I worrying about nothing? Leave me a comment below and let me know what you would do. That's it for me today, guys. Thanks so much for sticking around till the end of the video. Before you leave, don't forget to do all the things. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already and hit that bell notification icon so that you can be informed of future uploads. And as always, guys, thanks so much for watching.